All right, guys, we're going to continue our programming talk here. Dig into Prilipin's chart and how we use this in a day-to-day -day basis as we're determining what we're going to do in the gym and how to control for and how to know what the minimum amount of work we need to do is and what the maximal we can handle is. So let's first talk about what Prilipin's chart is. Uh, it's going to be the red stuff up here. I've added in the green. Uh, just so we can talk more about body weight exercises and the lighter weights that we typically use uh, in the gym, especially in programs like CrossFit. So uh, Prilipin's chart or Prilipin's table uh, was developed by studying, I think, 30 years of Olympic weightlifters. So Olympic weightlifting is a completely different game than CrossFit. So we want to keep that in mind in the context of what we're doing here. Uh, there's a lot we can learn from a sport that's been around that long that's based around developing overall speed, power, strength. Uh, they've learned a lot, and uh, we'd be stupid to not learn as much as we can from them, uh, especially when we're designing a strength cycle or especially strength workouts just in general. So what Prilipin's chart shows us is it'll give us an intensity range. So 50 to 65%. This is based off of your one rep max for a lift. 70 to 80 percent, 80 to 90 percent, 90 percent plus. Then it'll give you, based off of the data from 30 years, and again you, you'll need to google that to see if that the years is correct, but based off of all the data collected over uh, uh, with the Olympic lifters at the elite level, what is the optimal number of reps that they did in these percentages? What is the total range on average did they do for each of these? So for example, if we just look at when they were lifting between 55 and 65% of their max, optimally they got in 24 uh, reps in, the, in that intensity range. Uh, the total range is they did a minimum of 18 reps and a maximum of 30 reps uh, on average. So uh, this chart is kind of used as the gold standard for programming. Uh, and uh, we want to base a lot of our decisions off of this. So if we're trying to back off a little bit, maybe we're coming off of a hard day or maybe we just have a back off week, uh, then we're going to be pushing towards the lower end of the ranges up here. If we're really trying to push it, maybe we're in week four, the last week of a cycle, uh, and we're really trying to push the volume, we may be pushing it upwards here. But what we know is we're not trying to pass your maximal recoverable volume. So that's up to a point you're going to get better. Once we start passing that point, you still might get better, but you're not going to be maximally as good as you would have been if we would have stopped here. So in general, and everyone's going to be different, but in general, every rep you do in this intensity range over 30 is actually making you worse. It's no longer making you better. So we want to be really careful and we want to really control why we're doing things, what we're doing, uh, and we want to have this viewpoint uh, and then that way we can make an adjustments. Are all of us getting beat down? Do we need to pull back? But we want to be able to standardize this stuff so we can then make the adjustments. So what I've added for our programming here are two extra lines because a lot of times in CrossFit, especially in wads, we're not going up into these intensities. These intensities will show up every now and then in wads, but typically these are reserved for our strength day. So we, we need another framework uh, to make sure in our wads we're, we're able to push it and pull back. Uh, and so I've added two lines here, the less than 35%. So 35% is usually right around that Fran weight. This is the go hard. Notice Fran is 45 reps. So to get maximal intensity, we're going to need to get that volume down to a point that really lets you push the pace. So uh, if we want to slow you down, then we can get up into the 100 plus rep range when we're using super, super lightweight. When we're in that medium weight, this is where a lot of a lot of stuff falls in. Then we're kind of looking at 50 reps per exercise, as in that happy happy zone. Uh, but we can adjust it here. So if we want to make you go faster, we know we need at least 30 reps. And if we want to slow you down, typically we don't want to go too far over 75, because again, every single rep might actually be making you worse than making you better. So 
how do we use what we know here and put it into a day of programming and a day of working out? Uh, very typical for power lifters and Olympic weightlifters. And again, this is uh, where we're learning a lot of our information and figuring out how to customize it and fit it into a program here that makes sense. Uh, so a lot of their programs are built up around one primary exercise. So like a major lift, like a bench press, a deadlift, a snatch, clean and jerk, something like that, followed by three to five sets of accessory movements. Uh, these typically in those programs look more like bodybuilding type things. So how we've adapted and, and with a lot of success here is we kind of break that down into three different types of days that we'll run here. Maybe we'll have a primary lift, uh, a snatch, clean and jerk, uh, uh, one of the Olympic lifts, uh, back squat, uh, push press, classic strength stuff. And instead of uh, the accessory work, maybe we'll replace the accessory work with a wad. And in the wad, we're carefully controlling what we're doing here uh, to make sure that we're trying to hit the same volume and rep ranges uh, in a way that makes sense here. Another strategy we can use is just do a wad. Another strategy we can use is do a wad and accessory work. Uh, or we can go back and every now and then we'll just have a classic lifting day where the primary focus is lifting and we might follow something like this. So not every day are we looking at using, you know, we'll just say six exercises, especially in CrossFit where we're looking for a wide variety of stuff and constantly varied how we attack these things. Uh, but in general, with total reps, we're looking to stay within a framework that would make sense here and here. So in a wad, if we're only going to do a couplet with two movements, and that's the only thing we're going to do today, we first have to determine for that day, are we looking for a higher volume day or higher intensity day? What are we looking for? Once we've kind of made those decisions and how that fits in to the bigger picture and where we are in the week and where we are in the cycle, then we can start making decisions of uh, what type of, which are we gonna push it to the maximum? Or are we gonna pull it back? Maybe we double up on a movement. So there's a lot of considerations in there, but uh, as far as from the big picture, the big macro cycle, where you're, we're working to an event, within that we have our littler, smaller mesocycles, tend to be about a month long, uh, and within those we're gonna vary our intensity and volumes. Uh, so how do we determine on any given day what's the right number of reps? We take the big picture into account, we take what week we're in into account, we take within that week what day type we're trying to accomplish, and then we can use that as our framework to decide where, if we're going for optimal, if we're going for minimal, if we're going for maximal, but now we have a framework for understanding, is the work we're asking our athletes to do reasonable? Is it enough or is it too much? And we have to attack it under this framework, or again, we're just taking spaghetti, we're throwing it at the wall, seeing what happens. So. The program's not random. There's a lot that goes into it. We've got uh, a lot of spreadsheets that we use to track this stuff just to make sure we're getting uh, you guys the best possible program and workout possible. Uh, yeah, so we'll keep digging into programming in, in future videos. Talk to you guys soon.